Welcome to episode number three of the Road to the Million podcast. I'm Ray, your host, and if you stick with me until the end, I will turn you into a millionaire. So let's get into it. So today's topic of the podcast is a very, very important one. I'm going to share with you how you can find a million dollar idea, how you can make sure that since the beginning, from the start, you start on the right track, you have a solid idea with good, solid potential is going to make you at least a million dollars or more. Because when I look around me, I see a lot of different people, especially in today's society, you know, today's, you know, what's really trending today is entrepreneurship. Everybody wants to start their business, not because necessarily they found like a gem or like they found like an opening or like an opportunity. People do it for the lifestyle. People do it because it's the cool thing to do. Because they can tell their friends, I'm an entrepreneur. I work for myself. So people kind of do it for, you know, basically kind of selfish reasons. You know, they, they do it just because they feel like doing it. And that's not how you find a million dollar idea. Okay, so this is why today's episode is extremely important. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can accelerate your journey to making your first million. I'm going to be releasing one episode every single week. So make sure you don't miss them out. So I don't even know where to start. It's going to be a very, very important topic. So when you want to, you know, launch your first business, what I'm noticing is everybody who that I know that made their first million, multimillionaires or even billionaires, they all have the same, you know, kind of common thought process before they start a business. And all the people I know that fail in business or barely make it, they also have the same traits and patterns and the, the way they make their decisions. So when you start your business, how do you start your business? Like, what's the thought process? What do you think about? This is something you really have to think about. Because the reason why you start your business is going to determine if your business will make it or not. I'll say that one more time. The reason why you start your business will determine if your business is going to make it or not. You know, for example, if you, you know, have a lot of friends who are real estate brokers. Some of them really like real estate. So, you know, let's say you wanted to become a real estate broker and I asked you why. And you're like, yeah, Ray, I want to become a real estate broker because, um, you know, I like real estate. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. So, yeah, I'll do a real estate broker. Why not? See, this is a problem. You're never going to really make it if you think like that. Or, you know, if you start uh, whatever, uh, you know, like a painting business. Why did you start it? Oh, because I love it. You know, it's it's fun. And I, I you know, since I do it as a, as a hobby, why, you know, not start a business with it? You know, thought processes like these are not going to make you uh, a million bucks. Because you're basically only taking one side of the equation, which is just you're doing it because you feel like, yeah, like you want to do it. You're doing it because you like it. Right, which is not a bad thing necessarily, but you can't just consider that. That's not enough. You have to also take a moment to analyze the marketplace. You have to take a moment to find openings in the marketplace. Right? I th I genuinely think like people like Elon Musk and very very you know high achievers and you know billionaires. I don't think they just do what they like to do. I, I genuinely don't believe that. I mean, some of them probably like what they do. But they're probably identifying problems, looking for opportunities. And when they find openings, they kind of jump in. And, you know, with their time and expertise and resources, they build businesses to influence the world. That's what they do. So even you're, if you're starting, you're like, right, right, I'm not Elon Musk. I'm just, you know, I'm an 18-year-old. I, I have $2 to my name. It's okay. You know, you can start by adopting the same, you know, thought processes and mindsets as millionaires and billionaires. So the reason why you start your business is going to determine if you're actually going to make it or not. Now, I love giving examples because I, I know people remember examples and, you know, I, I learn through examples a lot. So the, one of the examples I'm going to give you today is my own business because I like to speak from experience. I remember when I was back at school, you know, I dropped out eventually. It wasn't really for me. I went to university. I went to CJEP and I got a pretty bad grades. And through my, you know, scholar like scholar years my college years my university years i was looking around me and observing and i realized that a lot of people have different problems problems equal opportunities that's why i love problems i'm a problem seeker i seek problems everywhere i go every time i see people complaining i smile not because i'm a psychopath 
because I, I know that I can help in that situation. Like I see an opening for improvement. When I see someone sad about a situation, when I see someone struggling with anything, it could be a business struggling to generate more leads. It could be a student struggling to get more grades, uh, better grades, or it could be someone trying to lose weight. It could be someone going through a breakup or like a divorce or not being able to maintain a happy relationship or problems, you know, parents with their kids. There's pro There are problems literally everywhere, every day. So when you start being more aware and you open your eyes and you're like, hmm, where can I make an improvement? Where can I make a move? Where, where can I bring something that maybe I have to help an industry grow? When you start thinking like that, now you're thinking like a billionaire all, all of a sudden, right? If you're only thinking about, I want to buy my Lambo and live by the beach and travel to Mykonos in Greece, like the market doesn't care about you. That's the hard truth, right? That's what you want. But you have to consider what the market needs. So that's how you start a solid business from scratch. You have to identify a problem. So if I get back to my own example. So I went through school. I noticed that a lot of people had a lot of pain in school. A lot of people were not able to get the grades they actually needed so they could get accepted into their dream job. A lot of people wanted to become doctors. I was one of these people when I was younger. I had a phase in my life where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And med school was appealing to me. I, lo I love to help people. You know, I'm a, uh, I like to listen to people. I, I like to give people advice. So I was like, yeah, maybe me being a medical doctor would be an option. And a lot of my friends wanted to do that as well. Now, the problem is it's very competitive. It's very difficult to get the grades so you get accepted into med school. So I was, you know, aware enough through my, you know, when I was maybe 19, 20, 21, to look around me and to watch all these people have problems. And I opened my eyes and I looked around me and I was like, what if I could help these people? What if, you know, I had some help when I, wa I went through school? What, what would that help would look like, right? And I started brainstorming. See, business is not very simple. It's not very, it's not very easy, actually. It's, it's not that complicated, but it's not very easy. Sometimes you have to like sit down and just like think. And the problem with a lot of people today is they don't want to think. They, they don't want to take the time to just sit down, take a piece of paper, write down a little business idea, business plan, you know, run some numbers, do a little market study, market research. People don't want that. What people want today is like the 30 second drop shipping course that's going to turn you into a millionaire. Like that's what people want. And the good and bad news in that situation is that there's a lot of people who are so like impatient to make money that they keep falling for these traps, which gives more room and opportunity for the really disciplined people to actually go and grab these opportunities for themselves. So when I was back in school, I, you know, found this problem where people really wanted to get accepted into med school. And then I started brainstorming solutions. I was like, if I had to go through college again, if I could start again from scratch, from zero, what would have really helped me? And then I started thinking. See, it's a thinking process. It takes time. Good ideas that can actually make you a lot of money are not things you can find on Google. If your strategy to make a million bucks is to go watch a couple of YouTube videos and then all of a sudden you're going to find a, the magic formula is going to turn you into a millionaire, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Like the real people who make the real money are not here teaching you how to make money, right? Like Elon Musk doesn't have a course on dropshipping or how to start a company, right? Most billionaires and very, very successful people, they don't really have courses teaching you how to make money because most of the money is made by you sitting on a chair and thinking for a long time until you find your own opening. Not everything is copy and paste. Not everything is systems and processes. Yes, obviously, when you build a business, at some point, you're going to need some systems and processes. But what I'm saying is, like, if you're trying to, like, start a business, sometimes you need reflection. Sometimes you need to be a little philosopher. You need to get that philosopher part of you and start to actually look at the world and be like, you know, where can I position myself in an industry where I can actually bring something to the table? And in exchange, I can make millions of dollars. So that's what a lot of people lack today. That just, you know, 
patience to actually sit down and think an idea through, do a little market research, and then start building it step by step. So my business, my education business, was successful because I identified a strong pain point, a real problem people actually had. And then I started building solutions step by step. And by the way, it wasn't easy. Like my first year in business, uh, you know, was uh, lots of ups and downs. I was working like 70, 80 hours a week with basically nothing, no pay for myself. I think I worked at least two or three years uh, before I actually touched a single dollar from my own company. And, you know, that's something I share publicly. I never really paid myself uh, from my own company for the first few years. And the reason why is because I kept reinvesting, reinjecting the money into the business. So it became the business that is today, right? So now it's big enough so I can pay myself and uh, pay everybody who works for me. And, you know, we pay a lot of different things. So there's a certain level of sacrifice when you start your first business. But to get back to my point, to identify your, your, your idea, you have to find solid pain points. You have to find a niche of people, a group of people who share similar problems. It could be in different industries. It could be in photography, right? I'll give you a couple of examples right here. You know, let's say you like photography. Well, there's a lot of guys out there who really suck on dating apps. They're trying to get matches, trying to get dates, but their pictures suck. Or maybe their pictures on Instagram or social media suck. So maybe you can become a dating app photographer and you specialize like this, and you start to build your clientele. It's not very difficult. You, you could probably build a decent business. Maybe not make a million dollars in your first year, but you can definitely make like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month profit just doing that, let's say, if you like photography, right? But you need to specialize. A lot of problem, a lot of, a big mistake people do all the time is they, they're too general. Like, they're like, I'm a photographer. What do you do? Well, I do everything. You know, I take pictures of cats, dogs, uh, you know, weddings and lifestyle and cars as well and uh, helicopters. And, like people like to know that you're good at one thing, right? Like if you needed to have a surgery done, I think you would appreciate knowing that that surgeon only does that surgery and he's very good at it instead of like a surgeon that can do, oh, I'll do anything you want. Oh, you need a nose job? Well, I'll do the nose. Oh, there's an open heart? I can do it as well. Oh, yeah. I'd be a little skeptical. I'll be a little afraid. So that's how you should think when you're starting your first business, okay? So it's really about identifying a solid pain point, identifying a problem that a common group of people share, and then you can bring and test a solution. And I'm saying the word test. The reason why I say test is because a lot of people think that, you know, oh, I identified a problem, so, and I have a solution, I'll just do it and it's going to work out. Business is a lot of ups and downs. So it's a lot of experimentation as well. The people who win in business are the people who are patient enough to keep testing until they find a winning formula. I'll say it again. The people who win in business are the people who are patient enough to keep testing and experimenting until they find that perfect winning formula. Most people just try like once or twice, maybe three times. I think I read somewhere where like, 95% uh, of people give up after three tries and whatever they do. If they get like three L's, they lose three times. After the third time, they just back off and they, 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 they lose. They, they just give up. So in entrepreneurship, I promise you, you're going to have a lot more than three L's. It's, it's a, you can have a consecutive strike, you know, strike of like L's, but you just have to keep your head high and keep pushing until you make it. That's really the secret in business, really consistency. It's experimentation. It's consistency. It's actually solving a real problem as well. Because once again, I see a lot of people get into business for the wrong reasons. So you really have to take the time to find what people really need help with. I'll give you a few ideas. You know, let's say, um, you know, there's, there's actually a lot of business people who are not on TikTok. It's a common one, right? Let's say you start to learn TikTok. In like 30 to 60 days, you can literally become like a TikTok genius. You can become a TikTok, TikTok certified expert, whatever. You could do it in 30 to 60 days. It's not very difficult. And then you can go offer that service to a lot of different businesses, people who make, let's say, a minimum of you know, six figures a year, or maybe people who do like a minimum of seven figures a year, or like maybe 250, 500K a year. Uh, maybe you want to specialize with uh, real estate agents. Maybe you want to specialize with mortgage brokers, maybe with restaurants. You can choose, right? And then you just basically approach them with a, a very good offer. You tell them something like, hey, 
you know, I'll run your TikTok account. You know, for you know, I'll charge you whatever, one thousand a month, two thousand a month, three thousand a month, depending on your offer, maybe more, maybe less. And you know, you, you do you give them like a risk free offer to get started. You tell them, Hey, you know, I'll do it, you know, for the first month. Let me just show you what I can do. And if you like it, you can pay me at the end of the month and we can continue. If you don't like the results, well, we can just move on. You have nothing to lose. So you create something like that to kind of help you get, you know, started with that client. You know, I, by, the, by the way, I talk a lot more in details of, you know, how to get clients, negotiation tactics, how to, you know, increase your income. You get to chat with me one-on-one -on -one as well. So if that interests you, I have a little community. It's called the Road to the Million Community. It's on Patreon. It's only $49 a month. So I'll just plug it in right now if you want to learn more about it. Just click the link somewhere in the bio. And you get to chat with me, ask me your questions, and you get access to more, you know, in-depth videos where I show you exactly, you know, how to how I break my own deals, how to get clients, and everything you need help with in business. So, um, yeah, that's one example. You know, TikTok, a little agency. You can, what can you do? I like the barbershop example. I have a lot of friends who are barbers. Uh, you know, once again, like, if you want to become a barber, like, what's your thought process? That's what I like to look at. Like, wh what makes you want to become a barber? right? Is it, oh, well, I have a lot of friends who are barbers and they seem to make a lot of money. So let me try to become a barber. Maybe I can hop on the trend and get some money for myself. That's a thought process, right? Maybe another thought process could be, uh, well, I don't know. And it looks like a fun job. You know, you get, you know, you kind of just cut hair and then you talk with the people. It's chill. It's relax. That's your thought process. Do you think you're going to become a millionaire if you go in with that thought process? Probably not. Maybe your thought process is, well, I've noticed that there's a lot of, you know, maybe successful people, business people, entrepreneurs, maybe real estate agents. Uh, they like, you know, to do a lot of videos for social media. So they need a haircut very often, but they're very busy. So maybe if I can go to them, charge them more money because these people value their time more than money. So they're willing to spend more time, more, more money. Maybe I can build a little clientele of like 20, 30 high ticket kind of, you know, barber clients. I charge them like a hundred dollars a haircut. And if you do like 10 haircuts a week, you make like $1,000 a week. That's an idea. Now you, 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 you identified an opening, right? Let's say as a barber, you're like, you know what? I don't want to position myself like everybody else. As a barber, I'll try to, you know, identify a different problem, bring my own unique solution. I'll test it, see how it goes. And, you know, if it works, if it works out well, let's do some quick math. If that works out well. And this barber, let's say this kind of like entrepreneur, business people, barber, or maybe celebrity barber, he's able to charge a hundred, a hundred bucks for a haircut should, should do. I, I've paid a hundred bucks for a haircut before. I know people who paid over a hundred bucks for a haircut. Like it's more common than you think. Like any traditional barber shop, you can, can charge you 40, 50 bucks for a haircut and beard. So a hundred bucks is not that much more if you can like go see your client. So if you can do like five clients a day. Five days a week, that's 500 a day, 2,500 per week, that's $10,000 a month. That's a six-figure job, and you only have five clients a day, five haircuts a day, that's it. So I'm just throwing ideas to show you that when you actually take the time to identify a market, identify an opportunity, and you go, and there's no one else doing it, you have more potential to make your first million faster than anybody else. So this is why I keep telling you how you get into your business, how you find your business idea determines if it's going to work or not. The thought process behind your business idea is going to determine if you're going to make it or not. So I would encourage you to maybe take a few minutes of your time, maybe more, and maybe write down a list of maybe different business ideas you have. If you want to chat with me, by the way, just join my community on Patreon we get to chat. If you want to share, you know, some ideas with me, you want to validate your business idea, I'm here to help you. So just join my Patreon. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, a lot of good stuff. I want to give you hope because, you know, making your first million is not as hard as you think. You just have to take your time at the beginning to find a good opening and then you experiment for some time. And when you start getting some wins, you double down on these wins until you make your first million. All right. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you appreciated it. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel. And once again, if you would like to chat with me, you want to get access to my exclusive content, don't forget to join my Patreon. It's only $49 a month. 
we're a group of you know like-minded people motivated people and you get one-on-one -on -one access to me to chat with me directly all right so click the link to join the patreon and i'll see you in the next episode